Hello, we are, this is Thursday, 8, um, August 13th of 2020. Um, and we just want to thank you so much for joining us today in our discussion with Ebony Mukasa from Webney Creative Solutions. I am so excited to have her on the show with us today. Um, Ebony, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join us. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Thank you all for inviting me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're so excited. And thank you all for joining us this morning. I just want to let you know that we are ARC Solvers, um, Cybersecurity and IT Services. And we just want to be a service to our community by making sure that we um, give business leaders, Miami business leaders, a platform to be able to talk about what they do um, and how they can help you grow the business. So if you are a, C a CEO, a business owner, an entrepreneur, a Miami business leader, I want you to go right now and go and join Miami Business Leaders Group on Facebook. Listen, we are closing business, we're networking, we're having fun, and we're really building a supportive community around small businesses here in Miami, Florida. We want to get to know you. Um, so go ahead, go and search Miami Business Leaders, or I'm going to go ahead and put the link on the chat, Miami Business Leaders Group. We want you to join and be a part of our small business community. We have so much fun in there. And actually, Ebony from Webney Creative Services is part of our group and she has been in there networking um, and, and sharing um, information. So we, we're just excited. Um, and I have Reginald Andre as well, who's joining us, CEO of Arc Solvers. Um, and if you don't know who we are, we are a cybersecurity IT services um, in which we manage the IT um, departments for other small business. So if you're looking for cybersecurity, IT management, email management, network, low cat wiring, any, anything related to IT, um, we are the people that you want to call. Um, so Ebony, I'm just going to start. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here. Thank you both for inviting me. This is awesome. We are excited that you decided to join us. Um, and we have so much to talk about um, yeah. because Ebony, we have known about uh, Ebony uh, Webney Creative Solutions for a while now. This is, right. this is not the first time that we are hearing about you because we at Arc Solvers have personally used your services. Yes, yes. And it's yeah. been great. Um, and, and I'm thankful, really. I mean, I, I, I this Miami Business Leaders group that you all have started um, has been wonderful. I've personally learned a lot from uh, the followers, the people in the group. And, um, and I think it's amazing what you all are doing, seriously, sharing your platform with uh, business leaders in Miami, especially during this time. It's so generous of you. So thank you again. That is awesome. And thank you for your time as well. Um, well, first of all, right, I want to let um, tell the audience, how did you start WebMe Creative Solutions? What is the, the mind and, and the vision behind your business? Well, you know, interesting enough, um, the story is, is a unique one in that I was working for a well-known nonprofit organization here in Miami-Dade County. And I was turning in my letter of resignation because I was stepping off to start uh, a venture that was not Webony. It was a, another business. And um, at that meeting with the CEO, because I walked in, I was giving them a number of weeks, uh, you know, um, preparation. And he said to me, um, Ebony, would you consider taking us on as a client? And I said, a client of what? <laughs> what do you mean a client? And he said, um, I was working on their website management, their social media, lots of doing lots of marketing. And they were, you know, just getting into that area um, of social media. And he offered me, uh, told me to write up a proposal. And he offered me my first position, my first, actually, he was my first client. 
in Webony. Mm -hmm. And um, and the name comes from that 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 office. That's what they called me because my name is Ebony. They they named me Webony because I was so uh, they said I was pretty savvy and picking up on technology and things. So literally, that's how I started. I kind of stumbled into it. Someone else saw some uh, talents in me uh, that I, I didn't think was marketable. And, um, and I stepped out and from there, I've uh, taken on new clients and small business owners and other nonprofits, et cetera. That is amazing. And I love what you said that others saw a talent in you. And sometimes we, we as business owners, entrepreneurs, visionary, creative, yeah. um, we don't even see the gifts that we ourselves carry. But mm -hmm. it's so amazing that others do to the point yes. to where they push us and they encourage us yes. um, to to work in those talents, to work in those giftings and, and, and that creativity. Yes. Um, so I, I kind of want to talk about um, how you have helped ARC solvers in the past because we have used your service in several different occasions um, in which you've helped us with. I know that um, one of the services that you provide is virtual assistance. Yes. And, yes. and any type of work. And I know that we have had to call you to step into that role for us when we, yes. when we need that. And I thought that that was such a good, um, service to offer mm -hmm. especially during this time because Absolutely. as you know a lot of employers a lot of businesses have had to let go yes. of some employees um or employees themselves have had to leave due to either it's covid or due to family emergencies mm -hmm. due to other things so there's a pl there's thousands of businesses out there that are that are left without the proper help that they need in yes. order to help them continue to grow their business. So can you talk about your virtual assistance uh, offering and what is how can how can that help an entrepreneur in this current time? I think the one first one of the main things or the reasons why you would really um, take on a virtual assistant is mainly because the work that you are doing as an owner or as a business person or the mind behind the, the visionary, um, your time needs to be used to further your, your company's vision, whether it's ge income generating activities whether it's attending meetings or, or envisioning new products and services or just managing the day-to-day -day operations of your, your company. And so when you are faced with downsizing or crisis situations that we're in right now, you, you have to, uh, I think you have to kind of pull yourself together in a sense and not allow yourself to go down that path that says, well, let me try to take everything on and then you end up not really being as um, successful or, or your days aren't as, as um, helpful as they should be. And so for me, um, as a virtual assistant um, offering those services, I come in and I come in at a level that's already a level of, of um, more expertise in, in the area. So if you need uh, Excel or if you need certain things done, um, you're not dealing with a beginner or, or an intermediate. You're dealing with someone who already has the capacity to, to come in, step in, get, get the items done that you need to be done within a reasonable amount of time, which then that's the thing, dealing with someone who has more expertise in the area um, allows you to have uh, the work done in a reasonable amount of time staying within your budget. So if you deal with someone who, let's say your nephew or your niece is home from college, yes, they may know how to do um, work on WordPerfect. I'm sorry, Word, that's way back, y'all. Word, <laughs> uh, Word or Excel, but how long will it take them to get it done, right? So that, that's something as far as virtual assistance. And that can go into email marketing. That can go into social media management, things like that. Um, so there's a wide array of services um, that can be customized to meet your needs. 
Right. Yeah, I, I actually remember when we used you because Tanya, she was going on maternity leave. Yeah. So we were planning for about five months or so that um, we needed some help. And we honestly, we didn't, we, we needed the position filled because um, for what she was doing at that time, we needed someone to be able to answer the phone, receive packages. But I can remember when we hired you and when we saw what you could do, everything else you could do when the phones weren't ringing, the packages were right. coming in. You know, everything from redecorating the office to um, helping with the marketing. And we had yeah. some complicated spreadsheets that we needed to, to kind of like see like, okay, we need all this information here, put there. So yeah, we, real, we realized that we, we're glad that we didn't just go for, you know, a college student that was just kind of just twirling their hair when they weren't doing nothing, but someone that was productive and had yes. that type of experience. Yes. It makes a difference. Yes. <laughs> and I, it, actually, we were so happy with your services that we wanted to hire you on. <laughs> um, I know. I think we've approached you in several different occasions, but I think that's just a testament. It's of, such an honor. I mean, yeah, that's what you want. Yes. It's such it's an a honor. testament of the type of work that you produce and, and, the, the, and the excellence in which you work. Mm. Um, that we just kind of wanted to, you know, take you on after, after that experience. But of course, as an entrepreneur, we all know yeah. um, that your heart is really to help multiple uh, businesses yes. and companies yeah. succeed and grow. So let me ask you this, you know, in this time, what would you say to someone who was considering starting a small business prior to the pandemic? Mm -hmm. You know what? I would say to them to do it. You know, um, one, one of the businesses that I had, we started in a recession in 2008. And we were, we, we, people were like, what are you doing? But you can see, here's the thing about a recession is that it doesn't, it's not forever, right? And this pandemic, the situation that we're facing right now is going to end. We're going to get on the other side of this. What I would say to you is that if you're going to start, use the word small in, in realistic terms. Don't try to start uh, from a standpoint of where you're going to go out and get massive loans. You're going to go out and rent a space. You're going to go out and, and, and get all this overhead. You can start right where you are. Companies are running major Fortune 500 companies out of people's living rooms right now. They have staff working remotely and they are functioning at capacity within their living room. So why can't you do the same, right? So you're going to establish yourself. You're going to, you're going to, you may have started with an idea. Let's say you had that idea pre-COVID, but what you're going to really need to do is look at that idea and you're going to look to see if there's a current need for it. And if it's not, what you're going to do is you're going to Try, you're going to do your best to pivot and look at what is actually needed in the industry that I can provide, right? And you can start there. I would say to anyone to do it. Um, a lot of people do things such as, oh, what about a forming with the, with SunBiz, with the state of Florida and things like that. I would say start off and do a sole proprietorship, doing business as very minimal overhead, just so that you can professionalize yourself and get moving. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I, I totally agree with you with that. I know that, for example, you helped our nonprofit organization, the Mavino Project, um, mm -hmm. in our very early baby stages um, in helping develop our website and helping kind of create all that. And your services were so needed because not everyone can afford like a full-time, you know, marketing person or a, a web developer or, or just even someone to help them guide them through the process. I know that, for example, when we work together on my nonprofit side, we, we drew up a plan, a strategy, and I would have never, I mean, you know, I'm all, I'm all passion, I'm all, you know, let's go full force. And my, um, my planning, and let's just say the operation side of it was not my forte, but that's where you came in and you kind of helped me create that structure which yeah. has completely launched 
I mean, our nonprofit to where it is now. So I want to personally get on here and thank you for that. Um, because that was such, again, such great work. And I think um, Andre has, has a question for you. Yeah. yeah so the other day um, I posted on my Facebook and I'm going to quote it. It says, what you like should be your hobby. What the world likes should be your business. So I always are meeting, I'm always meeting new people and what they're asking me is how do I start my business? Mm -hmm. And especially during this time now where they could be unemployed uh, because they're in the restaurant business, maybe they have a catering uh, business, restaurant, you know, like uh, making food, et cetera. So what would you say to those people that are right now, uh, unfortunately they're unemployed because of the industry that they're in or the economy or whatever the case is, but they have a talent inside them. And mm -hmm. it's something that, they can do without having to, you know, it's kind of like a side hustle. Okay, so can you talk about, about those people that are unemployed right now, they're sitting at home, and what can they do in the meantime? Yes. So here's my thing, side hustlers. I love side hustlers, right? I can cheer you all on because it's important that you understand that, you know, one thing is always, I, I say to anyone in business, if you don't start off looking to meet a need, it, it seriously, compassionately, ge um, generously, um, authentically meeting a need, then you really are not going to last in business, no matter how what it is, because every company structures to meet the need, whatever that is. It doesn't have to be an essential need. It can just be even a desire. So for a side hustler right now, um, I say, look at the gifts and talents. I'm a big uh, person who says, look at what's in your hands. What do you have in your hands right now? You may have a cell phone, you may have a laptop, you may have a computer and a printer. You may have an idea, right? And so whatever you need to do, you, uh, social media is free, thank God, right? None of us have to pay to use Facebook unless you're gonna you pay for an ad. No one has to pay to use Instagram or Twitter. Um, and there's other social media platforms out there. LinkedIn is awesome. Um, pro be professional. It's not a dating site. I like to <laughs> remind people of that. Um, but I would say the first thing is to get serious. And, and if you, I always direct people right now, I have this um, uh, three tips for pivoting a side hustle to more of a, 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 a small business format. Um, and you can go to my Facebook page now and you can click on that and you can get a free download to, to give you three tips. But I'm gonna tell you kind of briefly, really is the first thing is to get serious. There's no more wishful thinking. There's no time to try, take those ideas I usually refer to as balloons because ideas remind me of a handful of balloons on a string. And if you let it go, it's just gonna float off into the atmosphere, right? You're gonna tie those balloons down, at least one, right? One balloon, you're gonna tie that down, that's the idea. Then you're gonna professionalize yourself because right now you are in the, the playing field has been leveled. Uh, Amazon and uh, Facebook and all these Fortune 500 companies are functioning at the same level you are out of people's living rooms, right? So right now, everybody, it, it's like we're all in a level playing field. So you need to professionalize yourself. That means get yourself, like clean up your Instagram. If you don't have one, set one up. Use Canva, very basic to create some graphics. Make sure that your, your content is clear, no typos, proper grammar and punctuation. Ask for the sale, ask for it. Like whatever you're offering, ask. And then be consistent. It's, it's important that you stay consistent with what you're doing. You are not, I'm, I'm very straightforward. I don't like to sell pipe dreams. You're not going to see instant return on anything. That's any of us who are in business. When you first started out, you had to do the work, right? So you're going to put in the grunt work. You're going to do the work. You're going to stay consistent. You're going to professionalize yourself. You're going to get serious and you're going to focus on an idea, an idea, a gift, a talent. It could be just going around to your neighbors, the older neighbors in your community and taking out their trash. I'm not even joking. There are things people are doing amazing things. I call it COVID care. And that is finding ways to care for your community because people are willing to pay for it, right? Finding ways to care for others. This is where you meet the need, right? And so 
figure out what, what do you need? What do you look down your street? Look at Walmart, people standing in line. What kind of things are needed? And then you start filling those needs. So I say, do it, do it. <laughs> That's so good, Ebony. And I know that there's probably someone out there who's listening and they're saying, did she just say, you know, taking out people trash, you know, mm -hmm. I, I want to share with you <laughs> real quick, the story. It's not, it's not my story, but it is the story of one of the top fortune 500 property management companies in, in wow. the United States. And, yeah. and it's called Camden property trust in which I was able to work for, for many, many years before, um, before doing what I'm doing now. And the CEO founder of the company started this amazing company who is now just, you know, multi-billion dollar yeah. company throwing out people's trash bags in apartment complexes. And wow. as he kept throwing out the people's trash bags in apartment complexes, he started to say to himself, wait, you mean that if I can build one building and mm -hmm. charge someone over and over and over again on that same apartment, mm -hmm. I can, and, and, and boom, but, but yes. it started taking out trash. <laughs> look, look, we can't underestimate. I tell you, humility goes a long way. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way. And, um, and where you start, you won't end. Do you understand? Like where you begin, you won't end. And this is my, my personal passion for helping uh, people in small business and nonprofit um, in side hustlers is because that's where I began, right? I told you, I didn't have the idea to do this. Someone else saw me and, uh, and asked for me and told me, show me how to write a contract and all of that stuff. And uh, I have to say the contract was very lucrative because they were very generous. They saw uh, the value. And so um, I start where you are and just be consistent. And, I, and as you do, just like this gentleman that you mentioned, more ideas will come and you'll find ways to add on. And then next thing you know, you're, you're doing well. You're, you're caring for your family. You have some security, income security, and that's, that's what we all want. That's amazing. And why should someone, Ebony, that is looking, that, that already maybe has a business, who may be needing some extra help or, or someone who's needing some coaching and some consulting along the way, why should someone consider working with a consultant like you? So let, let's talk really quick. The, there's two different things. I, can, I do coaching. And I also do consulting and coaching is the is really kind of motivating you to move forward with your ideas. And then consulting is me coming in with a specific uh, skill set or, or uh, expertise and, and then helping to invest that into your company, helping. So really the on the consulting side, it's really kind of me pushing forward. And on the coaching side, it's really you, right? Because you if you're not motivated and you don't follow through on the things that that we come up with the plan of action which is what I call it a POA which is what I did for you Tanya which, which mm -hmm. you mentioned that structuring then it won't it won't uh, it won't happen so for I would say if you need to if you don't know what to do you you have this great idea and you just don't know where to start and you don't you you uh, have a some idea of what you want to do, but you don't know the steps. That would be where a coach can come in, right? A coach can come in and it's like being on a team. The, the, the player has the, the skill, the talent, and the coach helps direct that. But on the consultant side, that's where you're saying there is information that I clearly need to know in order to move my business forward, such as process management or such as um, uh, cash flow or, or redirecting, uh, resources, how to go lean, what, what do I, how do I do that? So that would be something that a consultant can do in addition to many other things. And the key is about with a consultant, um, most consultants, I would say all don't do everything, right? 
because again, it's an area of expertise. So as I um, get people in who are interested and they contact me, if they say consulting, I really go deep into asking them, what is their needs? What are their needs? What, what are their expectations? And I don't take on everyone because I don't have the level of expertise maybe in the area that, they, that they're looking for. So, but I do refer, <laughs> I do share. And, and I love that you said that, Ebony, because you can sometimes find coaches that are kind of like the jack of all trades. And in the 10 uh, plus years that I've had my business, um, I've had everything from a coaching because I'm not a good public speaker, believe it or not. So okay. I've had someone coach me on public speaking. I've had someone coach me when we've had internal employee issues and okay. we needed to kind of, you know, right the ship. So we've yeah. had, we, we've invested in that. And I say investment, not spend. We've invested. It is. Yes. Um, uh, I have a little pop belly. I'm hiding it right now. So I have someone coaching me with my, with, with you know, with weights and exercising. And then yes. um, we, in, at uh, the company Arc Solvers, we were uh, struggling with sales and marketing. So now we have right. a sales and marketing coach. So okay. I love the, and then we, one more coach. We had Bamal, if you remember that, Tanya. Um, and Bamal helped us because as a, um, our core values and as a team, we weren't, we weren't connecting and oh, we wow. had someone come and help us with that. So I love that you said, you didn't say, oh yeah, I can help with everything. No, no. because a, a coach is focused and he has yeah. his expertise. So, so I'm glad you said that. Yes. Yeah. So I had another question for you. Um, so um, what are the challenges that you've seen so far in um, small businesses since the pandemic? I think some of the challenges really um, has been uh, one morale, like people who you, you've been able to retain employees, um, companies have gone lean. And I, I strongly suggest, I, I have my notes here that I put some things together, but I strongly suggest that everybody do uh, some, an audit of your, your um, business. You do some inventory and you operate lean right now. And lean means really that you're operating uh, without excess. Everyone has, you're moving from a culture of excess to a culture of thrift, right? Um, but in that culture, in addition to being uh, now separated from your team physically, um, because some people are team players, meaning they, they really feed off of their environment. And it's been difficult for those who have not been able to be with their team. And then you have those who are flourishing because they are independent workers. Well, in addition to that, and now the company's going lean, all the perks and things like that, I really think that morale is a really big thing. And, and that um, some, some people get anxiety from knowing too much. Some people get anxiety from knowing too little. But I tell you, no one not, likes to not know. So I think that um, one thing that companies can do to help with morale is to really be uh, transparent with their teams, being honest about what, what's happening. In addition to being transparent with your teams, you need to really be transparent with your clients too, because people in this season, the unknown is what's making more anxiety uh, take place. So I've heard um, of, of people who are working, they're, they're burnt out out. It's amazing. They're home, but they're burnt out. They're exhausted. Um, the, they're, uh, you know, they feel uh, deprived. Not only can they not congregate with their family and friends, but now they're co-workers too. So that's one thing. Um, and then I think another thing is really uh, obviously funding. Funding has been a huge challenge for small businesses. Um, Many small businesses, my husband and I own one. Uh, in addition to this, um, we are pivoting right now. And pivoting is really just kind of changing your business model when you're facing a crisis to survive, to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we had a bus transportation service for children. Uh, we've been out uh, of business since school closed. And so what we have started to do is to pivot to a meeting needs. And one of those needs is concierge and career services. And mm -hmm. so that's something that we're, we are developing right now. Um, and again, it is one of those things that's not really costing us really any money to do. Um, and so I would suggest as well for those who are, because funding is such a challenge um, and because 
what you were doing is no longer needed, possibly. It may no longer be feasible um, for, on your end. You may not be able to produce the product anymore at whatever cost because of shipment and because of your manufacturers and all sorts of things happening. So as you pivot and, and as you change course, you also want to look to do things that may not have that much overhead or, or financial impact on you. Yeah, and I like to even um, expand on that on how we're using you for the courier service because typically we would have had our technicians, um, for example, a laptop needs to be returned. Well, our, our technician would drive to the client's um, business, set up the laptop and everything like that. But our technician has their two kids at home. She can't leave, he, she can't leave home. So now what we're doing is once the computer is ready, uh, your, your company's coming over and white glove service picking up the laptop, dropping it off to the end user. And then, you know, from there we finish setting it up remotely. And, and that's, that's great because I, I, I have a lot of business friends that have been um, affected with COVID and, um, and I always encourage them. Um, one, one of my friends, um, he has a concierge service um, mm -hmm. for condominiums. And I okay. said, well, look, if you can't do the physical, go virtual, give them a special package, maybe not yeah. as much and so forth like that. So right. I love that, that word pivot because, um, um, you know, we've been blessed with the technology, but at, uh, being a technology company, so people mm -hmm. still need us, but at yeah. the same time, the same type of work isn't coming in. So we have to be right. creative in um, doing that. So, so yeah. great, great, um, great note about that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of people might say, well, gosh, you, do you mean to tell me I have to spend another, you know, more dollars on now, uh, you know, a courier service or a concierge service or something like that. But in reality, we actually found it as a, as a savings because we were having our technicians drive, let's just say 45 minutes, an hour. I mean, you know, Miami traffic, yes. it's yeah. crazy. So mm -hmm. we were having them drive, let's just say 30, 45 minutes, an hour to just drop off something when then now they can use a service, we can use you um, for the courier and they're now able to continue to work on clients, you right. know, and, and continue to, to bill and continue to service. So in reality, it's not another expense. It's, it's an investment. It's, it it's a way to provide quality and, and white glove service to, yeah. to your clients, which I think in this moment is very important. So we can talk about meeting the need and we could talk about, you know, uh, building your, your business or growing your business. But if you are not growing it with the, with the customer service that is yeah. now being expected, um, right. that can cause an issue as well. Exactly. And I think that it's really important that you know, people begin to start thinking a little unconventionally, you know, uh, right now, let, let's just really quickly, a couple of things that you can do right now. Um, you want to look at short term needs. People right now are not planning for a trip to uh, Bermuda right next year. Truthfully, people are not. People are really trying to get through the next couple of weeks. So while you're pivoting and while you're deciding on the new things to do, you want to look at short-term needs, immediate to short-term needs, what's needed right now. The next thing is out with the old, in with the new. If you are uh, already, you have social media um, presence, you have a website, you need to be updating your content like what was said and what you were promoting and what you were posting, your ads, et cetera, pre-COVID um, really are outdated. You need to be addressing topics right now. If you have not uh, communicated with your clientele about COVID, how many of us have seen the COVID updates coming in your e inbox from Macy's to Foot Locker? Everybody has been updating their clients or their customers about what they're doing. And the reason you want to do that is because people want to continue using your services. Like I still want to buy the sneakers that I need in order to go walking with my mask, whatever. But people still want to be able to use your services, right? But they want to know, what are you doing? How do I engage you? Um, if you have short staff right now and your, your turnaround time for answering emails used to 
be two hours and now it's 24 hours. You want to communicate with your customers and let them know that so that they know that it's not you slacking off like your customer service hasn't gone uh, the opposite direction. It's simply the conditions right now, right? So you want to be forthcoming. Um, increase your engagement on social media. I can't tell you, Tanya, pre this call, we were talking really quick about how you all, your social media following and your engagement has gone up like what, like 100%, something like that. Amazing. Why? Because I'm a follower. You all have been putting out sound, relevant, needed content. Um, you have been at answering questions that people have, people are wondering, what do I do? Um, I loved the series that Andre did when we first started hitting this and people were working remotely, how, telling uh, companies how to do this. How do you transition your employees to working remotely? In addition to security and all that, who, who would have thought? I totally forgot about security, right? Um, so that's really important. If you have are, are not able, people are saying, I am overwhelmed. Well, that's why you outsource. Again, you outsource those efforts that will move you forward, but are not the best use of your time, right? Because again, you're growing the company, you're making calls, you're following through, making sure product deliveries are happening, dealing with customer service, dealing with your morale of your team. That's something that you should outsource and so making sure as well that as you email and as you communicate with people please make sure that it's relevant right it's relevant to the moment and i have to say if you have not communicated at all it's not too late you can right now contact me if you need help to compose an email to go out to your client base to help them understand what's happening with your company. We're still here. We're still willing to provide excellent service, et cetera. Um, my last thing is uh, online ads. People, I have never clicked on an Instagram ad since I have been on Instagram. And just in the last couple of weeks, I every day I click on an ad because they are so useful now. Like I am not moving about looking for new things finding new you know new products and these instagram ads are amazing uh, so i suggest that if you need to upgrade your marketing that you start doing that not only am i clicking on the ads i'm purchasing right like who would have thought um so those are some tips right now that you can do to help you move forward and, and I want to actually go back a couple of things that you said that was so interesting because I'm going to, I'm not going to say his name, but I'm going to, okay. gonna, but I'm going to send him this link and I'm going to tell him you need to listen about minute number 43. Okay. He's my accountant and I'm not going to oh. say his name. Okay. And, um, you know, be, prior to COVID, he sends me the papers, need to fill out. He needed me to prepay um, for the service and okay, no problem. Prepay for the tax services for the company and for the personal. And then COVID happens. And then a month goes by, two months go by, and I'm emailing him and I'm saying, hey, what's the status? And mm -hmm. then he's like, okay, let's set up this date. And then the date comes up and, and the appointment never happens. We never actually talk. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? You know, I, I gave you all the documents you needed. I, I, I prepaid for the service. Why is it taking so long? And then he comes back to me and says, hey, look, I'm sorry, but you know, my one of my assistants got COVID and then somebody had to take care of their mom and all these excuses and, and valid or you whatever, but there's still excuses. Right. And and this is a perfect example of, of, of just investing in that virtual service and communicating yes. with the customer says, look, I know you're usually used to me returning your taxes within two months, but right. because of COVID, because I'm helping other people with PPP loans and yeah. all these other things, I need to I need to extend the time. And that little thing would make, and totally. to, I'm speaking to you now, accountant, that no. this really is me considering, you know, moving services because you did not communicate. Because yeah. I'm frustrated because I want to get my taxes done. I have other yeah. stuff that I, I want to get done. And, and for five months, I've been waiting. So it's a little rant, but it's just the importance of if you're watching this um, and you have clients that you have not spoken to, and, yes. and they're used to you uh, getting back to them at a certain time, or they're used to a certain schedule or whatever type of business you, you are, you have to communicate. And if you can't communicate, if you're that drowned in business, right. call, call and get some help, get the virtual Absolutely. assistant, 
teach, yes. you know, they can learn how your systems work. You mm -hmm. assign things, you approve it before, you delegate, and it will go a long way because there's a lot of money. Everyone, I need to use Andre for as for an uh, ad for me. He he just sold excellent services. No problem. No problem. <laughs> well, you know, and it's not really a rant. It's it's the reality. It's it's the you know we we like to be real here in Miami <laughs> business leaders. Um, and this is what CEOs, entrepreneurs, and business leaders deal with. You know, we we also deal with frustrations from yeah. other uh, you know other companies or other businesses. Um, but I think that what Andre expressed is just, I mean, it's the reality of, of what we're, what we're living in, you know, and what we're dealing with. I do have a question, um, that I want to address that actually came from one of our views. It says, what types of things make sense to outsource? And I think that's a great question because maybe I might be a business owner and mm -hmm. I might be thinking to myself, well, I don't, I know I need the help. But right. what kind of things can I give you? What kind of assignments can I give you? So just kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, well, obviously it would, it's uh, business specific, right? So every business is, is unique, but let's, let's think about, I think I tell people to look at your, um, your operations, right? Meaning from, from a week, take a week, because we don't all do everything every day, right? So you're going to look at your week and you're going to say, what kinds of things spark frustration in you, right? Meaning that you feel like it's getting in your way. You feel like it's, it's, it's slowing down your day. It's like sludge in your, in your engine, right? Uh, what kinds of things uh, are you not doing that you need to do? Like, look at, I know most people have a task list, right? You have that list of things that you want to do. I've been wanting to start emailing my clients. I've been wanting to, you know, update my website. I've been wanting to, social media is driving me crazy. I'm trying to keep my own, you know, engagement, but then my professional engagement is just not happening. Um, whether it's writing, uh, coming up with spreadsheets, sometimes you need um, spreadsheets done or you need, uh, for me, I do uh, some other classes and things. And so I do uh, presentations on those classes. I do it on Zoom and I share uh, those presentations with my, you know, the people who are in the meeting or the, the group. Well, you need, you want to have such presentations done or you use those, um, but putting them together is just taking up too much time. Um, and the list can go on. A virtual assistant, they're not a personal assistant per se, but there are those two, you know, it's, it's not, there, there are those who are personal virtual assistants and, and then those who help you focus on your business. Um, but so you can do a number of things. I, I would say some virtual assistants monitor your, your inbox for you. Uh, many people uh, have two or separate. I have multiple inboxes. But um, so you have emails coming in, let's say your info in, uh, email address, which is connected to your website and your, your social media. And people are communicating with you through that. So maybe you need someone to monitor that and, and respond or send that, that information through your sales funnel. Um, so you have all of those different things that you can you can do. But if you really would like to know, I, I always offer a free 15 minute consultation and um, and then I follow up with a survey um, because it's not a good relationship if we don't know what to expect of each other. Right. So we want to make sure that that I know what you need, that I can fulfill the need um, and then to set that up and then move from there. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And, and if you're watching um, and you are a Miami business leader or startup company um, or CEO entrepreneur, I think it's great that you are offering these free 15 minute consultations so that people can learn more about you and can learn more about the types of services that you provide. Um, actually, and just listening to you, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, after this, I'm actually going to call you <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, uh, to help with, 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 with some things that we need to get done. But I mean, I think it's just great. Um, Ebony, I know that uh, you also, one thing that I love about some of the Miami business leaders that we have in our group is that they are huge um, philanthropists. Um, they, they understand the responsibility of owning a business, but yeah. also uh, giving back to the community. 
I'll give you a great example, which the offer is still on the table. So if anyone is listening to us, it's listening to this, uh, um, to this recording or to this live, one of our members at the Miami Business Leaders Group, one of our business members has given us a grant to offer two computers to anyone that is needing a computer, especially for children who are now going back to school and they do not have a way to access their school because they don't have a computer. So we love that we're constantly meeting entrepreneurs that are in the in the right heart, that have the right heart for the community. Yeah. Um, so if you're out there and you know of a family member that is in need, um, if you know of a, of, of a friend that is in need, maybe they have children, um, three or four children, and they're only working off that one laptop at home. Um, we do have a grant from two of uh, um, from one of our business leaders who has donated two computers that he's willing to give to a family in need. Um, so please help us share share that message. But Ebony, I know that you're really involved in the community. Can you talk about um, some of those involvements and what are some of your philanthropic efforts in, in Miami? Um, well, since 2008, um, my husband and I have just, we're just passionate about helping those in need, anyone, you know, moving them forward. And so much of our efforts started in Haiti, um, raising funds to meet the, the crisis that was um, going on in Haiti at the time. And then after the, earth, the big earthquake, we continued those efforts, um, raising funds to, uh, you know, to orf send to orphanages, things like that. Um, and our efforts have continued. We're very uh, big on the homeless community. Um, we serve them through our church. Um, and then also our heart for uh, human trafficking and, and stopping that epidemic. We've partnered with you, uh, the Mavuno Project, and just really making sure uh, that awareness is raised. Um, and then our next step is really, um, has always been to uh, provide uh, clothing for them, um, you know, as when uh, people are, are rescued out of that situation, uh, they're rescued with the clothes on their back. And so uh, our heart has always been to find a way uh, to cover them and to uh, clothe them as they are step out and, and move in their journey towards healing and restoration. And so those are some of the things in addition to just helping children. I mean, we've done outreaches and you know, uh, for kids in North Miami and Easter hunts and all sorts of things, just just putting our hand to the plow, as you say, whatever the need is, um, seeing that need, stopping and then um, moving in action, you know, which is for us is love, like showing that physical love, getting involved. And so we intend to continue to do that. And that's great. And I know that I have personally seen your efforts, especially with feeding the homeless mm -hmm. um, and really being a light into the community. And I think that that is amazing. Um, those are the type of people we like to do business with um, because they aligned with our vision um, for our company. Um, here at Arc Solvers, we, we believe in a family environment, which you got to experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we love aligning ourselves with people that are in that same mindset of being able to give back into our community. Ebony, we are coming to the close of this. It, this was so much fun. It was. <laughs> um, talking to you and, and being able to really expose um, your services because we have been using you for, for uh, two, three years now. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like this is the great timing, you know, timing is key yeah. and it was the great moment to really expose your services and kind of like our little hidden secret, <laughs> um, you know, people ask me, how do you guys do this? Or who, you know, how do you guys get so much done? Or who does this? Who does that? Well, here you have it guys. It's <laughs> Ebony, uh, we, we have exposed our secret because we think it's just so great and, and we want to share her and her services with, with our audience and, and, our, and our business friends. So please call Ebony for any of your, um, of your business needs. I also want to highlight a comment that was left from one of our viewers. It says, I have never considered this service, but in the past, um, but in this post-COVID world, we have to think 
differently. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think that that is so valid. Um, I think that if you've never considered these services, you're going to start to consider them now. Yes. Um, and, and again, you are, you're meeting the need and, and it's, and the need is great and it's, and yeah. it's out there. So Ebony, I know that you mentioned you have several downloads, you have several questionnaires, you have several things that you offer on your website. Can you tell the audience who, um, is listening, where can they go? What is your website? Um, how can they get in touch with you? Okay. So right now, if you go to my Facebook page, you all are, don't, don't click away. Stay here until we're done. But you can go to my Facebook page, uh, Webony Creative Solutions, and you'll find listed there the tab, the, the posting that you can click on it and you can get uh, three tips uh, for side hustlers uh, moving forward. Um, there you can find some links to some resources on uh, COVID uh, pivoting your business, um, some ideas on growing your business. You can go to my website, it's uh, webini, W-E-B-N-I-E-C-O.com. And that's all over the place. If you go to Facebook and you click, you'll, you'll get there. And if you want to schedule a 15-minute uh, a consultation, that link is right there. I did all of this before we started so that that information is at the top of the page and you'll probably scroll down one, two or three spots just to find what you need. And you can uh, click that, it'll take you to my site. You can fill out a really quick form and then I'll follow up with you to schedule that 15 minute um, conference call to get you moving forward. It's time people, right? It's time. Yeah, it's time, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what? There is no greater time than now. Absolutely. <laughs> There's no greater time than now. So I just want to again, thank you, Ebony, for taking um, your time uh, to to spend it here with us, to spend it with our Miami business leaders and to really just uh, share your knowledge and, and, and your and your wisdom on how to grow your business or pivot your business during these uh, during these this new normal that we're now that we're now calling yeah. it. Um, and if you're watching, again, we want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for spending your lunch hour with us. Yes. Um, education is key um, to growing your business. So the more you get educated, the more you partner with us over at Miami Business Leaders, um, the more you will grow, you will learn, and you will learn not just from us, but other entrepreneurs yes. that, are, that have been doing it for years and years and years. Um, I think that one of the most important things in growing a business is to listen to those who have done it before you. I agree. I um, agree. So join us, join us over there at Miami Business Leaders. If you are an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, and if you know yourself of a company that is needing cybersecurity and IT services, we service companies that have 10 or more computers um, and that are needing a dedicated IT department, but they can't afford um, their employees, right? They can't afford the employees to, that it takes to manage an IT department. That's where you would contact us, Arc Solvers. Um, and also you can go to our website as well, www.arcsolvers.com and also follow us on our social media, Facebook and Instagram. We want to, again, thank you. Enjoy your Thursday and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.